very young, really building since that NCAA run two years ago, and it's starting to bear through going into next year, I think, with this group. Yeah, they've got a lot of talent uh, that they've gotten a lot of experience over this year, so looking forward, you know, they're going to have that experience come back next year. They are going to miss the big piece in Covis in the back row, though. The third meeting all time between West Virginia and BYU underway at the Coliseum. Right away early dig for West Virginia Angelo. Guided over by the Mounseers, Haley Green. Set comes for BYU's dangerous hitter, Aaron Limson. Handled by the Mounseers this time. They'll go the other way, walked out of bounds. Yeah, West Virginia is really going to have to try to contain Erin Livingston. She's gotten really good swings. She's a very strong uh, hitter from all rotations. She's good at the front row and in the back row, so they're really going to have to contain her. 394 kills. That was her 959th attempt of the year. Kind of a blessing on the Christopher Heather room set. She's talking about, we don't want to rely on her too much, but we know she can get the job done. Yeah, one of the things that both Coach Sunohara and Coach Holt said, said about Erin Livingston is she has such a toolbox, that she has so many different pieces that she brings to the court, that she's good from every aspect. This year, Block doing a great job there up front. Within the way was Baratic, who I think has had a good year, a breakout year for West Virginia. Yeah, as a middle, that's not an easy position to come into as a freshman, a true freshman. And she's done a really good job of growing into that and becoming more confident as the season's went on. Subtle approach works for Livingston. She gets BYU's first point of the night. Yeah, she does a really good job at reading the block. And, you know, West Virginia's had a good block set up on her on the outside. So to be able to slow it down and give the defense for West Virginia a different look is what gave BYU that point. Two good setters in this game. Whitney Bauer for BYU coming with 859 assists. And then before the match, we saw Lauren DeLoe be recognized. She started the match with 1,001 for the year. 14th Mountaineer reached that plateau. Yeah, Lauren DeLoe has had a really good season. Uh, both, both setters for BYU and for West Virginia, they're both athletic setters that uh, are threats from the front row when they're playing uh, in the front row because both teams do run a 5-1 offense. Baratis once again making the play for West Virginia. 3-1 West Virginia early, serve for Quincy Coyle and the Mountaineers. Comes for Livingston again on the outside, blocked again by West Virginia. It was Jackson and Baratich again. Yeah, that's one of the things that West Virginia has to do well today. When you're playing against a team who has such a strong outside hitter, they have to get the block closed and get their hands pointed back in towards the court to block it uh, where the BYU defense is not. Reed Sunahara identified blocking as a big key for his team. So far, so good. Then a service there. Something else he talked about was getting momentum but keeping it because you make a mistake. Yeah, one of the things that you know BYU I kind of mentioned this uh, against Kansas, they struggled with their out-of-system game. So West Virginia is going to be serving aggressively, and unfortunately that do, does come with some unforced errors. And for West Virginia, hopefully they don't have too many of those. Mountaineers have 46 more services than their opponents this year. Set outside, Jackson with the attack, well handled by the Cougars. Once again comes outside, and it's Livingston. Livingston already with her fifth attack. Nobody else has attacked except for their center so far in this match. Lefty service on the way from BYU's Whitney Bauer. Now let's just get one back on a service here from the Cougars. Yeah, and this is the point uh, where West Virginia really needs to take advantage uh, of a team like BYU. They're not going to give you that many kind of free points, so you really need to take advantage of those opportunities. That hurt them against Kansas. Decent discrepancy in service errors compared to what the Jayhawks did. So in the net by Kovas, who had three service errors in the first nine points of this match. Livingston, someone who can play every spot on the floor. We'll see her serve now for BYU. 27 aces on the year is tied for third on the Cougars roster. Yeah, she's just such a, a good athlete. She's so she's such a threat from every single position, uh, and it's it's really showed in her performance and, and you know the awards and things that she's won throughout this year. Brief delay here before service. I mentioned this is the third meeting between these two teams. West Virginia's lost both. The most recent one came here for BYU, as you see the replay of that. Knocking the camera down, that was the reason for the delay. <laughs> Love that replay. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get the technical issues sorted out. Let's talk more about these two teams. West Virginia 
has lost eight in a row, yes, but I, I think they've come close, and, and we talked about it earlier. The Texas match is a, is a milestone to say, if we can compete with Texas, we can compete with anybody. Yeah, West Virginia really did a good job of sticking with Texas in both of those matches. They played a Thursday and a Friday, and I, I believe they were both three set wins for Texas, but every single set was a very close, close matchup. And, you know, like Coach Sunahar has said, they need to compete, and that's what they definitely did against Texas. Mia Lee with a kill. This is something that's developed well for BYU later in the season is the play of their middle. They both had 11 kills against the Jayhawks. Yeah, and that's why it's so important for BYU to keep the ball in system so that uh, Whitney Bauer can get the offense running and get those middles involved as much as possible to really throw off the block from the opposing team. Pushed by the Mountaineers. Van Lee Miller, well handled by BYU and pushed over by Kate Pryor. Miller will try to get up the deflection. She will score. Yeah, Bailey Miller really needs to, to have a big game tonight. Uh, you know, she's been swinging the ball really well, and she needs to keep having that confidence. You've seen her grow that confidence throughout the season, and, and if that continues, she's going to be a real presence from the outside. The best version of announcing her team is Bailey Miller playing well. When she does it, this team struggles. Jackson serve. Set up by Whitney Bauer and bang home off the deflection by Aaron Livingston. That's as hard as you can hit it. And from the back row, that's yep. not an easy thing to do. You know, your approach changes, your swing changes. You know, everything's different when you're 10 feet further away from the net. And for her, it looks, it's she makes it look really easy. Serve from Kamali Hiapo, the libero for BYU. Now to go to the other side attempt there from Maddie McGaff. Tip at the net. Handled by West Virginia, battle at the net, won by BYU, Doe over, tipped by Whitney Bauer at the net for BYU, and then again by Eden Bauer and Whitney McQuinn-Laris. Yeah, that's a hard play for West Virginia to kind of, to keep that up. They got so scrambled and out of system uh, that that's the kind of play that it, it's hard for you to come back from that, especially when BYU's strong block is waiting for you on the, on the outside. And Laris, one of the grad students from this team, along with Hiapo, who's serving now. Serve out of bounds. Hands it back to West Virginia. Already two service errors both ways. The Mountaineers and Cougars lead to an even first set so far. West Virginia started really well. Had an early 3-1 lead. Bailey Miller's two serve. Into the net. Make it five service errors, three by West Virginia. That's a hard, a hard thing for a team to kind of overcome when you have that kind of momentum on your side and then you miss a serve. And, you know, it, that's a frustrating thing. And both teams you need to be more consistent and you know have fewer errors from the service line. How much of that this time of year is fatigue when you're playing your last week of the regular season? Yeah, there's a lot of it, and especially you know for West Virginia's perspective, they've they've had a problem with service errors throughout the throughout the season. And I think sometimes too when you go back to the line and you know you have an issue with service errors, you kind of get in your own head and you try a little too hard instead of just getting just get the ball in play at this point. You know you don't want to be too aggressive, uh, but you do want to give your team a chance. Hit by McEwen, where it's out of bounds, gives the Mountaineers service back, but again, the service error, this time from McGath. Four of BYU's nine points on West Virginia service errors. And when you're playing a team, you know, of the caliber of BYU, that is such a strong, you know, team from top to bottom, you can't give them three points like that. Cougars were picked to finish second in the Big 12. They're gonna finish as high as third with a win tonight. And an ace. <laughs> Delivered by Aria McComber, one of the grad students on this team, Washington State transfer from Hawaii. Here's go up the middle with Miller, easily handled by the Cougars. Set outside for Livingston. She's got four kills. She does such a good job of getting on top of the ball and completely swinging through the ball to get it to go down at that sharp angle that you see. And she reads the block so well, too. She saw the seam there. Here's set it off the deflection. It'll be a kill the other way for Haley Green. Seems like all season, anytime West Virginia's needed a big swing, Haley Green is one that's, that they've been able to trust to go to. But at this point now, you know, you get that big swing, 
you get the ball back on your side, service service errors are things that they, West Virginia really needs to limit. Green up to 392 kills on the year, leading West Virginia. But guess who comes the other way? <laughs> Aaron Livingston. Oh, that is not an easy swing. Uh, when she's that close to the, to the outside and to be able to swing and bring it back to the line like that, that's not an easy thing to do, and she positioned it perfectly. DeLo was in good position, but she, she couldn't do anything with that because it was so perfectly placed. She was, you know, DeLo was right where she needed to be, but when you have a swing like that, there's really not much you can do. Bouncers will try again off the deflection. Green will score again. Those two going back and forth right now, Green and Livingston. And that's the kind of swings that you like to see Bailey Miller take. Because sometimes if she has, uh, if she has a big block, sometimes it causes her. I think that was Haley Green, not Bailey Miller. Um, but they need to not be intimidated by that block and still swing through it uh, and not hit it out of bounds. Livingston off the deflection. Kovas keeps it alive for West Virginia. Set from Delo comes. Miller off the net. Kovas retrieves it. Delo will try again the other way. Tipped over the net by West Virginia. Saved by the libero, Hiapo. Livingston's hit, handled by Kovas. Now a set from Delo. Miller will try again, and that one finds the corner. Bailey <laughs> Miller's kill cuts the lead down to one for BYU. Good yeah, work from Kovas defensively to keep that play alive yeah, twice. Yeah, and, and Bailey Miller was able to see the seam in the block there and really uh, was able to put the ball where she needed to to get that kill. Overpass there, battle at the net. BYU called for a carry there, not getting the whistle they wanted. Change of pace there from the left-hand Whitney Bauer. She'll do that often. That's here's the other way. Off the deflection, Tierney Jackson will score. Yeah, that was a good deflection for Tierney Jackson, but to look on BYU's side, Whitney Bauer, that shows her athleticism right there. For her to be able to go up and win a joust and then in the very next play send a hard fought, you know, tip over the net, that just shows her athleticism, how strong she is in the front row. She and Hiampo, the only two players for BYU that have played every set as an ace from Coyle brings them out the years ahead, 13-12. BYU. Plays the best defense in the conference. She was hitting just 167 against them. So the Mountaineers are more than doubling that. They went through the first set and they score another one to take a two point lead. Yeah, again, you know, BYU needs to stay in system so their setter can run their offense, especially when she's in the front row and only has those two options in the front. Uh, you know, they really need to keep the ball in system so that she can do what she's really good at doing. Quincy Coyle's service game continues. It's an excellent serve to test the back line and McComber. Swing from Livingston is blocked. But out of bounds, so it'll be a Cougar point. Yeah, when she swings the ball, it comes so fast and so hard at the block. And I think the West Virginia block was pulled off the net just a little too far, which she was able to kind of split it between the block and the net. Service from Whitney Bauer, left-handed. Kovas diving for it. Kept alive by Jackson and Kovas will guide it over. Whitney Bauer set up the middle and a kill. Mia Lee has been very effective when called upon. Her second kill to join Livingston six. Yeah, she has such a good swing and, and she she can jump so high where she's able to get on top of the ball and swing all the way through and make it really hard for the defense to pick it up. Talk about West Virginia. Mia Lee's only a freshman too for BYU. A lot to come for her. Cougars quickly tie this at 14. Whitney Bauer, the senior from Nampa, Idaho. Sister Eden on this team as well. Over cooked there from Kate Pryor. Tying it again at 15. Yeah, it looked like she kind of got behind the ball instead of getting on top of it. But that's one of the things that Coach Olmstead had talked to us about was they need to get more of their hitters involved. Uh, you know, Aaron Livingston's really carrying a heavy workload, so they're trying to spread it out and get all of their hitters involved. Livingston has six of their eight kills, 11 of their 20 attacks so far. Set for Bauer, once again Lee up the middle, once again she scores. Yeah, it was a little off speed. I don't know if it was her timing or the set that wasn't where she thought it was gonna be, but it was a little off speed that she was still able to uh, you know, get the ball across the net, and I, kind of, I think that off speed kind of threw the West Virginia defense off. Yeah, the block was kind of misaligned there to yeah. handle that easy finish for Lee. West Virginia's defense was a little on their heels, so they weren't able to, to get to that off speed ball. Livingston service. Come on, high, 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 high. 
Jr. set it outside for Jackson. Excellent attempt there by Livingston to try and save it, but Jackson put that beautifully towards the corner. Yeah, that was a good set from Delo too. She was pulled to the outside, so you know one of the things you want to try to do is freeze the block. And so for her sending that back, that's a good way to try to slow down the BYU block, and it was a perfect set. Back and forth, first set tied at 16 again with the Mountaineers' Tierney Jackson serving. Livingston rising for it from the back row. Hit high into the sky. Kept alive by Miller. Got it over by Jackson. Check comes outside this time. Cross court. Kate Pryor will score her first kill. That was a really smart decision by Whitney Bauer to send it to the right side because the West Virginia defense was all shifted over on the other side. So that was a good decision for her and a good swing. It's really the first time we've seen BYU use that right side effectively. It's either been the left or the middle. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things they need to do is just really spread out their offense and get everyone involved. Diapo hits her fellow libero, Kovas. Mountaineers will set for Miller. Well dug out there by Eden Bauer to knock it over the net. Delo setting it for West Virginia, and the swing up the line out of bounds on the attempt from Maddie McGath. That was a good swing by Maddie McGath, and when you're running that slide, that's a really hard thing when all of your momentum is kind of coming back in towards the court to go down the line. She just kind of turned a little too much and hit it out of bounds. Bit of a wedge now for BYU, up two late in this first set. Miller swing, blocked. The Q and Lairness, timeout West Virginia. That was a great bl block by BYU. She was here as a transfer. Yeah, she's only been here I think for about six months in total and, and he said she's become such a leader on the court. Uh, that she, uh, it's definitely someone that they're gonna miss greatly next season. Big thing's coming for her though, she's already been drafted to play professionally in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm excited to see that her, you know, go on and continue to play volleyball. Walk there at the net, now she was able to squeeze it over. And talking about the per ranks, I loved your question to Heather Olmstead about, you know, the growth of this game and knowing that players can not only aspire to be coaches, but can aspire to be pros more and more now. Yeah, it's, it's just so cool to see this sport grow the way that it has. And, you know, you can go to, on your TV, you know, pretty much any day of the week, and there are volleyball games being played on TV. And I don't remember that, you know, when I was in high school and even when I was in college. Overpass punished by Maddie McGann. West Virginia at the timeout has got this back within one. And that's what you like to see after a timeout is to come out, kind of turn things around. So Coach Sunohara has talked about this season, you know, kind of the middle of the match or the middle of the set is where West Virginia kind of starts to fall off. So to see them hang in there with BYU, that's definitely something that I'm sure he likes to see. Billy Miller serving for the tie. Bauer sets it up, swing is deflected. Kate Pryor has come to life for the last few points for BYU with another kill. Yeah, and it's, again, it's nice to see more of BYU's hitters getting involved. Even with Aaron Livingston in the back row, they still use her as an option, but it's nice to see them get more you know, attacks from the other hitters. This is one of their best servers, Hannah Biller, 30-1 aces on the air. Eden Bauer rising for it, too much, out of bounds. Let's bring it back within one. Going back to that swing by Haley Green, you know, that's one of the things too that West Virginia is going to miss about Camilla Kovas. You know, she was able to place that out of system ball perfectly for her outside to get a good swing on it. And that's something that, you know, you, you don't just learn that overnight. That's something that she has really honed in on uh, throughout her career. Eden Bauer with the attempt for BYU. Overpass by the Mountaineers, and it spins off the net and out of bounds. McEwen Laird is unable to punish that one, and we're tied at 20. She was a little too far off the net. That's one of those, you know, for West Virginia. Thanksgiving, golden blue and the darker blue of BYU dotting the stands. Rocked by West Virginia. They'll try again with Eden Bauer. This time she gets it down. Hustle to the Mountaineers. They'll guide it over. Set for Whitney Bauer outside. Once again, this swing comes from Haley Green. Slight overpass battle at the net. Paratus keeps it alive, and Mountaineers with too many touches. BYU will take the go-ahead point. Whitney Bauer does such a good job of playing in the net. You know, you can tell how strong she is in her shoulders to be able to, to win that joust against a, you know, a much taller West Virginia uh, defense. So she does a really good job of playing the net. 122 kills, hitting 357, 859 assists, 210 days. She does everything for this team. Set outside, once again, the Mountaineers will go to Green, but BYU able to block that. West 
Virginia will take a timeout here down to notable 4-0 on neutral courts, which could be where they are in the NCAA tournament as well, at yeah. least for the first round. Yeah, I believe they, they struggle a little on the road. I think their record on the road was 6-5. and five. Um, So on the road, they do struggle a little bit. Um, so I'm sure that, you know they are hoping for that, that home hosting. Trying to close out the first set here on the road, though. They get an ace from McComber to move two points away from victory in this first set. Comber, the grad student from Hawaii, picking on Kovas. The set comes from DeLow. Once again, the swing, and this time it is a kill for West Virginia's Haley Green. And again, you know, when West Virginia needs a big kill, Haley Green really seems to be the person that they go to to get that big swing to be able to get the kill. Her fourth kill of the evening, leading the Mountaineers. Big serve here coming from DeLow. Tipped over though, Whitney Bauer with a clutch play. Uh, West Virginia really needs to be aware of when she's in the front row because she is not afraid to tip the ball, uh, to turn and swing. Uh, she's a very aggressive setter at the net. They just need to be ready for that. Heather Olmstead saying she's been a difference maker for them with that ability, and you saw it right there. The swing point, she gives her team set point. Service from McEwen Lairness. It goes off of McEwen Lairness as once again, Haley Green's been the target late in the set and she more often than not has come through. Now she's fought off one set point. They will send Quincy Quo back to serve to try and battle with her way through a second. Another look at that kill. Oil delivering. Livingston rising for it off the deflection. Kovas keeps it alive. BYU saves it just in case. Livingston will try again and blocked. Block though goes out of bounds. BYU will secure the point, but a really good first set. 25-22 BYU wins it. Absolutely. That was a good hard fought set. Uh, I feel like both teams kind of came into their own toward news at every in every single rotation. And uh, she's definitely earned a lot of the awards and the accolades that she's got. Coming up 21 kills against KU. I love what Heather Holmes said about, said about her. She wants to be great. That's not something that everybody can say, Heather could say about them. S talking about how she was someone who didn't quite get the reps in club that a lot of players did and that she's just had so much upside and she's taken full advantage of that upside. Yeah, and that's great to see someone like that, you know, take advantage of the opportunities that she's been given and, and she's a phenomenal athlete and I was very excited to get to, to see her in person today. BYU takes the first set 25-22, 14-12, the difference in kills. Mountaineers actually out hit the Cougars 250-200 in that first set. Air there right away from West Virginia though, some miscommunication BYU on the board. That first set had nine ties and three lead changes, eventually won by the Cougars. Second look at that. A little bit of a collision there, neither team able to really recover that. Back to BYU's service and Ario McComber. Seven kills for Livingston in the first set, three for Lee, two each for Pryor and Whitney Bauer for BYU. Mountaineers led by five from Haley Green, three from Bailey Miller, a pair from Tierney Jackson and Emma Baratich and Maddie McGaff getting one each. 10 assists for Bauer, nine assists for DeLow for BYU and West Virginia, respectively. Popped over by Green for the Mountaineers. Set by Bauer, she'll change it up. Diving dig there from West Virginia and Dano and Neal, but the Cougars win again, two nothing lead. Yeah, that was a, a good read of the West Virginia defense. She was able to see, you know, kind of the hole behind the block. And West Virginia was kind of on their heels and, and wasn't ready to move forward to pick up that ball. Kill eight from Livingston. Overpass there, battle for the net. DeLoe does a nice job for West Virginia. BYU returns it. DeLoe back to where setting roll, setting it up, and a kill for Green. That was a great set from DeLoe to be able to kind of pull it out of the net. And, and still put it in the place that Haley Green needed it. That, that was a very difficult play for Delo, but she made it look easy. I mentioned earlier, went over a thousand for her career, thousand and one to start play today, creeping up that list. And cross court from Livingston. 
That was a great swing. And again, you know, West Virginia's defense was kind of where it needed to be. Maybe they could have shifted up a little bit further towards the 10 foot line, but that was just a great swing from Erin Livingston. For her to be able to see the court as well as she does, she takes advantage of every single inch of the court. To that off a dig as well was impressive. Wasn't a set. Kovas calling it, setting it for Jackson and blocked. Mia Lee. BYU's block does such a good job of getting over the net and positioning their hands to where the ball is, is very hard to play up if they get a if they get a touch on the block. Gonna see a lot of battles, I think, between Lee and Pryor on that BYU side of the mouse here freshman and sophomore the next couple of years. Absolutely. Once again, Lee. <laughs> And that was a solo block from her. And you know, as a middle, that was the position I played. Those those solo blocks kind of always amped you up a little bit extra when you were able to, to stop stop a quick coming up the middle. She's giving up two inches to Baratich, but she wouldn't have known it there. Yeah, absolutely. The low retrieving that. Off the deflection, it will be a Mountaineer kill for Haley Green. Quinn will back to serve for West Virginia. Bauer setting it for Livingston, and it goes off of Kova, excuse me, off of low for a kill. Again, a great arm swing from Aaron Livingston. You know, she had her body kind of facing the opposite side of the court and was able to swing her arm across her body to cut it cross court towards the other side. And again, you know, her ability to move the ball wherever she wants it shows how, you know, how many tools she does have in her toolbox. Crossed 400 kills for the year in the first at up to 404 now with her 10th of the evening. Not cheers though, score right back. Good for West Virginia to, to get that offense moving, let Lauren DeLow run all of her hitters, stay in system so they can get good swings like that uh, from Tierney Jackson. Kovas with an ace. Kovas is 18th ace, that's second on the team behind DeLow. It's a nice memory for senior night. Excellent serve towards the back corner. Livingston. Dug out by West Virginia's coil, set by DeLow, swung through by Miller and blocked. DeLow will try again. Miller will push it over. Livingston for Bauer. And then cross court. It falls. Yeah, those were some good swings in transition for Bailey Miller. You know, she did kind of get. Uh, stopped on one of her swings, so hit with some off speed. But one of the things, you know, anytime she hits with off speed, she kind of hits it right to where the defense is. So she needs to be a little more strategic with where she puts those off speed balls. Kate Pryor with the kill for BYU. Serve from Livingston. The low for Jackson. Tierney Jackson's been really strong on that slide for West Virginia, and she does a good job of splitting BYU's block. Um, yeah, the middle for BYU, she was a little late on that block, so Tierney Jackson was able to split it, and she's been really strong from that right side. Sophomore from Tulsa, 1-0 serve, goes back and out of bounds. Mountaineers with their fifth service air of this match. Several of them came early when they really could have created a little bit of a cushion on BYU. Instead, BYU hung around, ended up winning that set 25-22. To low for Miller. And off the deflection, she will score. Yeah, that was a great swing for Bailey Miller and a great set from Delo. You know, that just shows her athleticism. That pass was a little, a little low and kind of pulled her off the net. And she was able to put it exactly where Bailey Miller wanted it. Fourth kill for Miller, 14th assist for Delo. Much like Tierney Jackson, Bailey Miller will score and then serve. Goes short and too short. Now the service here for West Virginia. The 
averaged about two and a half of those per set this year. Delo blocked. There will be a point for West Virginia as it went out of bounds though. Yeah, that was a good block for BYU. From our angle, I, I couldn't see uh, that that went out of bounds, so it must have been very, very close. If you ever see a challenge from either team, knock on wood. <laughs> Serve from McGaff for West Virginia. Dug out, set, and blocked. Scramble there from Neal for West Virginia. Miller will guide it high and over. Set from Bauer, and the kill coming from that back row for Livingston. On a three ball like that, I think everybody kind of had an idea of where, uh, where BYU was going to go with that three ball. And again, you know, for her to be able to swing as effectively from the back row as she does in the front row just shows how, how strong of a player she is. Give her 11 kills. The rest of the team has eight combined for BYU. 10-7 Cougars here in the second set. Baratich's swing well dug out there by Piapo for BYU, and then the Cougars put it away. McComber. Livingston is really good at finding those holes in the West Virginia defense. Uh, so, you know, West Virginia really needs to try to get the block, at least get a touch on it to try to slow it down and give their defense a chance. Miller. Once again, dug out by Hiapo. Tip of the net, kept alive by Delo. Kovas will pop it up. Swing now from Haley Green, cross court, out of bounds. Yeah, that's a hard thing for her to do in transition. She kind of got a little twisted in, in front of the net and didn't get to get her full approach in, so that's a hard thing to do in transition when the ball's out of system. West Virginia will take a timeout trailing 12 to seven here in the second set. Going back to Erin Livingston, not only is she scoring, but she's scoring efficiently. In their first season. Cougars have scored three in a row to stretch the lead to five here in the second set. Set from below, swing from green. Livingston off the deflection, she will score again. It, it amazes me how far off the net she gets and how long her approach is. Uh, she has such an athletic approach and such a good arm swing. She really gets on top of the ball. And again, you know, just she's able to read the block well and was able to tool it on that attack. Now hitting 524 for the evening. Green. Good response from West Virginia. Yeah, you know, usually when you see a player who's hitting 524, they may have only had two or three attempts right. in the match, but she has 21 attempts, so still had that that good of efficiency. Really is just a testament to what she's done all season. Hitting, hitting 282 for the season, which again, with the workload she's had, is very impressive. Bauer setting it up, tip there, pop back by Jackson, set up here. Swing now from Green is blocked. Now to low for Jackson, off the net. Now she's appeal for the deflection and they will get their wish from West Virginia. So that happened right in front of us and I thought there was a touch on that. Um, the, the line judge confirmed that. Another look at it, right in front of us, off the net and over. Here's the low. Livingston. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. It's just such a quick arm swing, and that ball comes down so hard that, that if the block isn't able to slow it down, then it's, it's very hard uh, for the West Virginia defense to dig that up. Fourteen kills for Livingston. Fourteen points for BYU here in the second set. Kovas popping it over. Battle with the net. Bauer keeps it alive for BYU. Livingston now back for Bauer. Delo, Kovas. Now Jackson will set it. Try to place it down the line. Livingston saw that all the way. And then a block at the net. Baratich combining with Jackson for West Virginia. Excuse me, with Haley Green for West Virginia. Yeah, that was a big block for West Virginia. They needed to get a big stop like that. And they were able to close the block uh, both both the middle and the outside were able to go up at the same time, and that was just a great read uh, for the West Virginia defense. Quincy Quill to serve. 
That outside Lee, who we've seen mostly in the middle, hitting that one outside. Now returning to her spot, Miller off the deflection will score. And again, when you're playing a team that has such a strong block, you know, you're not always going to get that clean kill, but use their block to your advantage and try to tool it, try to get touches as much as you can. Altiers have put up four blocks, as has BYU. Set from Bauer, Lee. She's been effective with that second weapon up the middle. Yeah, she really has. She, she's been able to kind of take a little bit of the, the load off of Erin Livingston, and she's done a good job. You know, every time she's been able to get her approach, she has a quick arm swing and is able to read the block in the defense well. Whitney Bauer to serve for the Cougars. Below setting it for Jackson. Pancake there from Niambo, but she couldn't find a teammate. Mountiers will score again. Yeah, that ball was a little off the net uh, for Tierney Jackson, but she did a good job of, of positioning it to keep the ball in play. Tierney Jackson also directing that the floor be dried off in front of her. <laughs> Getting close to the holiday season here. The Santa hats coming out at the Coliseum. Final match before the Thanksgiving holiday for West Virginia. They'll play. One more in the regular season at Oklahoma on Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, 1 o'clock Central. BYU will close their regular season out at TCU next Saturday at 2 Eastern. And then on to the postseason for the Cougars. Lee. Hello, did good well, did almost too well to Dan and that one. She couldn't find a teammate. Yeah, that was a great swing. Uh, from Lee, and, and that's one of those swings where if your defense, you're in the right place and you're able to get a touch on it, it doesn't always go where you want it to go or go as high as you want it to go. So that was just kind of a, a you know, being in the right place at the right time for Delo, but unfortunately couldn't get it to a teammate. And you saw how little spin was on that ball. It almost knuckled off of her. Delo for Jackson. And that finds the line. West Virginia showing good fight after falling behind five points in this second set. Back within three. Yeah, West Virginia's been really effective from the right side with, with their middles and running that slide or any kind of, uh, you know, anything behind the setter. They've been real effective from that position today. Bauer off the deflection. Eden Bauer will score. So Bauer to Bauer for a point for BYU. Eden Bauer, the younger one, sophomore. I'm sure that was awkward where the big sister, quote unquote, was 5'9", and the little sister, quote unquote, was 6'3". Yeah, you, it, they, they don't, you wouldn't be able to tell right away that they are sisters. Ace from Livingston. She can score from back there too. Nice correction, score, uh, ace for Hiapo. Hiapo trying to put her team up six. McGaff's attempt blocks. Change the pace from Bauer. Good job there by the left hand of McGaff to knock it back over. That cross court goes Kate Pryor for the kill. Good rally there. BYU wins it. Mountaineers will burn their second time out here. Down six. BYU six points for winning the second set. Yeah. As BYU has scored the last three points. Kovas, Delo, Miller cross court gets it in. BYU saying no. Get a second look at it. Looks good to me. Yeah, it looked in. It's right in front of the line judge. He was in a good position to see that. By the way, Kim Wisham and Carl Bunner are referees. Christy Alltop and Ryan Lynn, the line judges. So that was right in front of Ryan Lynn. BYU turning to Livingston, but for once, <laughs> she hits it out of bounds. Bailey Miller serving for the Mountaineers, getting the signal here. goes where they wanted it to go, and you see why. 
Set up for DeLoe, that's a change of pace, but DeLoe knocks it over. Blocked. McGaff getting in there. Set from DeLoe. Swing from Green, handled by BYU, set up again by Bauer, and pushed home by Eden Bauer. Yeah, one of the things that BYU does so well is that when they are forced to hit something off speed, they do a really good job of finding the hole in the defense on the other side. Uh, so anytime, you know, whether it's a full swing or it's off speed, they, they just read the defense well and they have, they're just very smart about where they position the ball tonight. Bauer trying to flip it over. Now she has defended. Second look now for Green. Diving dig. Livingston once again handled by West Virginia. DeLille will try again outside for Haley Green. Good rally here between BYU and West Virginia and won by BYU as McEwen Lairness finds the corner and picks one Daniel and Neal. Yeah, BYU does a good job of you know running, getting in transition so that they can get their full approach and get full swings uh, when a long rally has been going on like that. Service from Billiter for BYU. The gap blocks. Diapo setting it up. And a clean kill down the line from Eden Bauer, who's been playing well the last few points for the Cougars. Yeah, that was a good swing. She really got on top of the ball, and it almost looked like she kind of went over the block and was able to position it in that deep corner. Eden Bauer picking up her third kill of the evening. Overpass there. Bouncers keep it alive, but two touches there will give the ball to BYU. And a big roar from the BYU bench as Rio Kimavor will come in, the freshman from Bristow, Virginia. Lots of fans holding up signs that say 24 behind the Mountaineer bench. So they've made the trip from Bristow, Virginia to, to watch their favorite daughter play. Good recognition as well, I think, from Heather Holmes to say we're up eight. This is a good time to put in the local girl to let her play a little bit. Yeah, she's got a big fan club here uh, tonight, so it's it's good to see her get some playing time in front of all of her family and friends. Haley Green for West Virginia gets the kill as Yabo can come up with that one. Baratish will check back in for Kobos. Another look at that kill. Love this camera angle from down low. Yeah, that was a good kill from Haley Green again. You know, she's been there when they need her. That was her 10th kill, and she, you know, she's hitting very well in this match as well. But then McGath hands it right back with the service there. Yeah, and that's that's a hard thing when, when you get a big swing like that, and then to have an unforced error, just giving it right back to BYU. That's definitely kind of deflates the the momentum and the, the positive attitude on the West Virginia side. Seventh service error for West Virginia. They're minus five in that category to BYU. They had a couple early, but they've settled down. Set point for BYU. But they hand it right back on a service error. Broadcasters Jakes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Spoke a little too soon on that one. McComber will be hunting me down after this match to <laughs> yell at me for that. Heather Olmstead trying to see her team finish out this second set. Lauren Delo serving for West Virginia. Gets some help from the net, works it over. Block there from the Mountaineers. Green and Baratich. Yeah, that was a great block. They were able to close the block, turn their hands back in towards the court uh, so that when the ball came down, it went to right where BYU's defense had nobody. Cougars tried to set Kemovor there to get her the, the winning point in front of her fans. And then a miss hit there from Billiter on an ace for DeLow. Mounts here's back within five. And Heather Olmstead, she has a... By Bauer, Livingston pokes it over. Kovas, DeLoe, outside for Jackson, she's blocked. Awkward pass there, tipped over by Livingston. 
Delo setting it up. Swing goes down. Mountaineers have scored four in a row thanks to Haley Greenskill. That was great movement by the West Virginia hitters too. Emma Baratich kind of ran that quick in the middle, which gave Haley uh, Haley Green the opportunity to run something a little higher just behind her to give her to kind of free up the block so that Haley Green could get a good swing. Kimmelor comes out as BYU goes for a little bit more defense. Aaron Livingston for the set. Yeah, they tried to go to her for a couple points and just couldn't get the ball. The reason O'Hara has done well this year is, yes, the results haven't been what the Mountaineers wanted, but I think he's done a good job of telling this team, like, hey, you've done a lot of good things. It's coming. You just got to keep doing these good things consistently, and you'll be able to win matches. Yeah, and they, they, we've mentioned this before. You know, they have such a young team, and the veterans on their team are new this year. And so that was, you know, they came in from different places. And so that's definitely been a learning curve for them throughout this year. And he's, he's remained very positive and, and he can see the growth and the potential that this team has. So Kovas is the only senior on this team. There are 13 freshmen or sophomores in this Mount Senior roster. 67% of their kills from freshmen and sophomores, 64% of their aces, 49% of their digs, obviously Kovas is a senior is gonna check that up a little bit in the other category. 63% of the solo blocks, 82% of the block assists from freshmen and sophomores for West Virginia this year. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a promising future for this team. They've really grown from the beginning of the season to where they're at now, and there's only, you know, room for them to continue to grow. BYU is one step away from clinching third place in the Big 12, winning two sets to zero. They'll defend the serve from below. Aaron Livingston's 16th kill opens the third set for the Cougars. Yeah, she's so versatile at the net, too, in the places where she can hit. You know, they can send one far out to the antenna so that she can swing from that. But she also has the ability to come in and hit more towards the middle. So she has so much versatility in her, in her swings. Jackson cross court. Overpass. Punished by Baratich. <laughs> This has not been a new thing for Erin Livingston. She hit 254 getting this 20 on kills against Kansas. The matches before that, 500, 390, 630, 484. I look to see if this is her season over hitting percentage. The answer is no, <laughs> obviously. And that's impressive. It's such a competitive, you know, conference like the Big 12. Now she's with another service there after getting some momentum back from that kill. Make it eight for the match. They have eight service errors, seven attacking errors. Yeah, they have. They've attacked so much better uh, this entire match, and those service errors have really just been the difference. Good defense there from West Virginia. When Baratich has been on the floor, the Mountaineers' block has been very effective. Yeah, she's done a very good job, and she, she you know, speaking of young players, you know, she's a true freshman coming in, and, and she has really grown through this year, and she's improved so much on her block, you know, getting there, getting the block set, closing it, and being able to get those block assists. I would say probably the year two goal for her is to get a little bit, little bit more versatile so she can play more spots on the floor. Yeah, and get some more swings too. You know, she hasn't really had a whole lot of touches from the attacking line either, so to get her more involved hitting would also be something to kind of work towards for next year. Good rally here. Livingston will get the touch at the net. And despite the diving attempt from Coyle, she'll score again. And again, they're so, so smart with their off-speed stuff as well that they can just find the holes and, and they just do a really good job of doing whatever it takes to, to win the point. Eden Bauer checks back in for BYU as Livingston heads to the service line. Yeah. Service error from Livingston. Her 42nd of the year gives the Mountaineers the ball back. Tied at three. This is the 12th tie of this match. Nine in the first set. Below setting it for Miller. Blocked at the net. 
The MVP certainly has been Livingston, but Lee is probably their second choice. Yeah, they've done a very good job. And, and with their block, they can jump so high on that block that you know, Bailey Miller, if she's going to tip like that, she needs to tip it a little bit higher to get it over the block so that it drops right behind uh, where the defense isn't quite up to that point yet. Six kills for Lee. She had a season high of 11 last time out against Kansas. Two in a row for BYU. They lead 5-3. Hiapo has served very well for the Cougars. They seem like they've scored a ton of points on her serve. Short this time. Kobos dives it over the net. And the attack up the middle for McEwen Lairness. Matri's done a good job on her. That's only her third kill in 12 attempts. Yeah, that was a, a good play, good all around, you know, even with that short ball. And for her to be able to turn and hit it cross court, uh, it was a good swing. Overpass again from West Virginia. Livingston flying in <laughs> for the kill. Mouse Gears will take a timeout, having given up the last four points of this third set. Yeah, that was a, I mean, I feel like we keep saying the same things over and over again, how well Aaron Livingston swings the ball. And it's been exciting to watch, you know, how, how they've done throughout the, the remainder of the season. Mouse Gears trying to get some momentum back on the volleyball court. Livingston from the back row, Kovas getting that one to Delo, and then Miller, Livingston overpasses that with the dig. Delo sets, delivers to Miller, that one overcooked out of bounds. Yeah, that's one of the things that Bailey Miller has kind of struggled with a little bit throughout the season is when she sees that big block, she tries to go over it and doesn't really get on top of the ball and can't swing through to get the ball to go down and unfortunately hits it out of bounds. She's averaged on the year about five and a half errors a match. She only has three so far today. Yeah, she has been much more efficient from the attacking line in this match. Cross court Pryor with the kill. That's something Heather Olmstead would love to see the last couple weeks of the season is for Pryor to come to life and be that second good hitter for them. Yeah, yeah, she talked about needing someone to kind of take that load off of Erin Livingston. She's, you know, Pryor's done a good job and, and they do such a good job of finding the, the sidelines. You know, they hit the corners, they hit right down the sidelines where you're kind of hesitant whether it's in or whether it's out. Block there from BYU's combination of McEwen, Lairness, and Pryor again. It's hard to tell for sure sometimes. Yeah, these, these officials do a really good job. Point from West Virginia. Okay, the challenge was turned over. It will be yeah. BYU's point. Now, I have line judged before. That's not an easy call to no. make in real time. So to be able to slow it down like that made it a lot easier to see that it was clearly in. So it will switch from 9-4 BYU to 10-3 BYU. We've talked throughout about the Mounts here's hitting efficiency. Negative territory here in the third set, 0-91. BYU think 305 for the match. Been clean. 11 errors for BYU, 10 for West Virginia. Blocked there again. This time it's Eden Bauer combining with McEwen Lairness. Eight straight points for BYU out of a 3 nothing tie. Kiapo has been efficient behind the service line. It's going deep this time. So it comes from Miller. Good diving dig from Whitney Bauer for BYU. And then the swing from Eden Bauer. Miller for West Virginia. Once again handled by Eden Bauer. Whitney Bauer pops it up. Battle with the net popped over by Kate Pryor for BYU. Miller will try again. Deflected. Got it by Hiapo outside. And the cross court kill from Eden Bauer. The likes of Pryor from Lee from Eden Bauer. I'm sure that's something that makes, makes Coach Olmstead very happy. This is something we talked about with Reed Sunohara was this team pressing a little too much when they're trying to make something happen. Sixth air of this set. Yeah. Yeah, when you're down, you know, like I said, two sets to none, and now you're down in this match 12 to three, sometimes you start to overthink things. You try a little too hard, and you start playing a game that's not yours. Kitty Cole in for West Virginia. She's played just seven sets now this year. 
They can't handle that serve either. Everything going BYU's way, and Kova slow to get up. She's ready to go, though. Gutting it out on senior night, trying to anyway. Mitsunohara will check on her. Reaching for that left ankle thigh area right away. Trying to stretch it out is Camilla Kovas. She wants to stay in and she'll be allowed to. Could be the last that ever mounts in your career at home. Let's see if she can rally here in the third set. Her opposite libero, Hiapo, has been serving for about 20 minutes, it seems like. Miller going cross court once again out of bounds. Seven errors for West Virginia. Yeah, and the first two sets, you know, West Virginia did a really good job of using the BYU block to get some touches, to get some tools, to, to, to you know, hit things for BYU to hit them out of bounds. And now it seems like they're trying to avoid that block. And unfortunately, it's resulting in these unforced errors. Meanwhile, BYU, which is hanging on all cylinders, Eden Bauer to the corner for a kill. 13 points in a row for BYU. Yeah, BYU really looks like they've settled in. They're playing their game. They're getting things in system. They're running their offense. And they're getting all their hitters involved. Let's here's bring on Sarah Gooch for defense. They're just trying anything at this point. And a big rule is Rio Kimavor comes back in for the second time for BYU. The Freshman from Bristol, Virginia, an entire section here at the Coliseum holding up signs with her number 24 on it behind the BYU bench. Miller blocks. Once again, BYU playing as well as you can play. Yeah, they really are, and that was a great, great block uh, for BYU, and that's got the crowd going. <laughs> Kimivore and Pryor. Watch there. Team scored the last 14 points. Miller rising for it off the deflection. Excellent dig from BYU from Whitney Bauer. And the other way it comes. Battle with the net. Kept alive by Delo. Now Miller blocked again. Just really tough to get any kind of power behind that with a set that close. It is, and you know, West Virginia is doing a good job of getting the ball to their hitters, kind of trying to stay in system or, you know, getting Kovis the second touch so that she can set up the hitters. But BYU's block has just been so solid, especially in this third set. Kiapo has served virtually this entire set. Goes short this time into the net. Eventually she had to get tired, right? As a coach, you're not upset about that yeah. miss. You know, when, when you've been at the serving line for that many points, you start to wear down, and, and at some point you're kind of like, let's just get this, <laughs> let's get this over with because my arm's tired. BYU scored 15 in a row before that service error. Seven kills, they're hitting 429. West Virginia hitting minus 348. Again, they're hitting a percentage all the way down to 125 for the match after it was around 300 for most of it. Another point for the Cougars on the kill by Eden Bauer. Yeah, and BYU's block has really stepped it up in this set. They have nine blocks on the match, five are in mm -hmm. this set. So they've really stepped up uh, with their blocking, and, it, and it's shown on the other side of the net for West Virginia. Back to what they've done all year, one of the best in the nation and second in the Big 12 in blocks per set. Delo outside and overhit by Haley Green. Yeah, that set was a little low from Delo, and, and Haley Green tried to tried to swing aggressively through it, but just kind of got underneath the ball and pushed it out of bounds. The stats are really not going to tell the story for West Virginia because they've hit they hit extremely well through two sets, and the third set's been the complete opposite. Nine errors after having seven in the first two sets combined. Gooch back in along with Kolar for West Virginia. Went out of bounds there. Green thought it was deflected. I thought it was too live. Might as well challenge this if you're West Virginia. Little stay.
stay is called, a point for BYU. They're now four points away from closing out this set, and they have one of their better servers in Billiter back there to close it out, the sophomore from McKinney, Texas. DeLow popping it up, walk out of bounds off of Whitney Bauer. Mountaineers will get a point here. And that's what West Virginia has done the first two sets, and it's kind of fallen off in this set. So it's nice to see Haley Green get a big swing uh, out of the out of the challenge. McGath serve. Set by Bauer, and a kill for Kemahor. That gets her fan club up on their feet. That was a great swing from Kemahor, and that says a lot about BYU too, that they can bring in a sub like that and get, still get really good swings, uh, really good approaches uh, for, their, for their backup middle. Nice to have a six foot five freshman on the bench. Yeah, that's definitely nothing to, to complain about for sure. It's our first look at another freshman, Brielle Miller from Orem, Utah, serving for BYU. There will be a point for BYU. Last touch by West Virginia's DeLow. Miller has not served a lot this year. One ace, no service errors, but that first so looked good down the line. Second one in about the same spot. DeLow setting, poked over by Green for West Virginia. Hit back by Bauer for BYU. Block again. Guess who? You can tell by the roar of the crowd, Kimmelvore. Yeah, their, their blocking has just been tremendously better in this third set, and that's really thrown West Virginia's attacking off of the game that, they, that they're used to playing. Six of their ten blocks in this set, as you said earlier. Match point for BYU, a dominant third set from the number 16 team in the nation. And another block from Kemavor to close it out. So, Ritsu Nohara talked about consistency.
ਨੂੰ ਸਿਮਰ